everyone, it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life and today is going to be a very casual video. This is my week number 31 pregnancy update. I'm going to really try to keep it quick because Olivia is taking a nap upstairs. She has strep, so she's been home a couple of days. She may be home tomorrow as well. We'll just see how today goes. So far, for the most part, she's back to normal. She's just really tired, so she's gonna be up there resting. I didn't want to disturb her being like right outside her room. So she's up, I'm down, and so the setup's a little bit weird. And you may hear her coughing here and there. To be honest, I wouldn't have even gotten dressed or put makeup on or anything. Uh, except I had a dentist appointment first thing this morning, so I still have the fluoride on my teeth. They say just leave it on as long as possible, so it's still on there. It's just looks kind of funny, so if you see like funny stuff on my teeth, it's the fluoride. That's actually the thing on my agenda this week. Well, I meant to film this a couple of days ago and then she got sick, so I'm filming this like last minute for you guys, but I think it's really important the dentists say it's really important to always get a checkup when you're pregnant. She said some insurances let you have three free checkups when you're pregnant versus just the regular two, like every six months. I never actually checked with them. I just have the six month appointment. So this is the second time during this pregnancy I've gone in and then the next time I won't be pregnant. So it's really important while you're pregnant and nursing. And now I had pretty much perfect teeth. I had one weak tooth that had a filling and it had repeated cavities like around that filling as my teeth grew and it was always just a weak tooth. So now it has a crown, but other than that, I didn't have any cavities until I was an adult when I nursed Olivia. That's when my teeth just went to heck. Something about the calcium from nursing can really weaken your teeth. So definitely like make sure you're going to the dentist, keeping up with your dental routine. I didn't change anything about the way I um, took care of my teeth. It's just the same thing I've always done, but I just, man, my teeth really got screwed up when I was pregnant with her. So this time I think I'm gonna be taking, uh, making sure I take a calcium supplement to hopefully not have the same problem nursing this time around. So yes, definite teeth health is really important. Uh, I'm just gonna walk down my questions because I don't have a whole lot. I go back to the doctor next week. I guess before we get into the questions, the only thing is they actually called me today with my c-section date and for privacy's sake I'm not going to tell you guys the actual date but it is scheduled on the calendar and I'm super excited um it's just it feels real now you know I'm about eight weeks away and it's just kind of shocking to me um how quickly the end part has gone it feels like in the beginning every day was super duper long and it was just like get through this hour get through these couple of hours get through this afternoon <laughs> as much as i've complained about the back pain and the little aches and pains here and there it is nothing compared to the intense nausea and heartburn that i was having for just months and months you know it went well into my second trimester and even now i have some bad days here and there where the heartburn is just unrelenting and i just cannot get relief from it um and i had a couple of days this week where my appetite just wasn't there and i'll talk about that more when i talk about cravings but for the most part i feel the best i felt this whole pregnancy these last few weeks so i feel like usually the third trimester you start feeling terrible again i just never had that second trimester really good happy spot it was just all kind of miserable now i'm just feeling way less miserable and so i'm saying the third trimester has been the best so far and we're not very far into it of course i still have eight more weeks but so far i've been in a much happier mood that was part of the thing i was so miserable and it made my mood kind of down i felt so so much better so anyway third trimester is really good for me this time i'm gonna go ahead and go down my questions got my ipad here to go through everything. We are in week number 31 and baby is the size of a pineapple. And as far as symptoms, my only new symptom is I have leaky boobies. Now, even weeks and weeks and months and months back, I don't know if I've ever talked about this or what week I did talk about this. If I did, I have like crusties around my boobies, but now it's like liquid. And one of the days recently, I took my bra off and there's like liquid all around there. So it's definitely, Leaky, I am wearing nursing pads at this point. I did buy some because it was just a little too much. I didn't want to like leak through my bra and my shirt or anything. It'd be really embarrassing. So I'm definitely having the nursing pads now. When I do feel like eating, I can still eat a pretty decent amount. Like I'm having a pretty, you know, what I would consider normal portion size for dinner, for lunch. Um, I don't feel like I'm getting to that point yet that she's cramping everything. I'm kind of surprised because at this point in Libby's pregnancy, I was definitely eating much, much smaller meals. And in the beginning of my pregnancy, 
I had to eat small meals because I'd get nauseous and now I'm just being able to eat like, you know, full normal size meals. So I think she's doing the thing where she's folding her legs up so that she's not taking up quite as much room. I feel like that might be the case because I don't really feel her much like pushing on my rib cage or pushing on my stomach or anything. I'm still able to eat pretty big meals. I still definitely feel major out of breath, but I don't feel like she's like right under my rib cage, like suffocating me at all. So I really feel like she's probably just folded in half and the AC just cut on. So you may hear some of that. Since I was having aches and pains, I did end up getting a belly band. I got this one. It's just a one on Amazon that's ranked pretty well and it's um, breathable, which I need. It's Texas, so we're in really major heat right now. And I was afraid it'd be too hot. So it's just a really thin material. It stretches so you can wrap it around yourself. And it's been really, really nice. I use it when I'm standing up, especially like when I'm cooking, I get achy just standing up for a long period of time. So I've been using it for that, but like sitting down, I don't have to use it and it's actually uncomfortable to sit down. So if you're gonna be standing or walking a bunch, I definitely recommend picking one of these up. It's really, really helped. So I'm gonna talk about cravings and then my last symptom. There have just been a couple of days this week where I just could not figure out what I wanted to eat and nothing sounded good. I didn't have much of an appetite. I really didn't know what my deal was, but I just didn't feel like eating. And I went too long between eating and did the same thing I used to do where I'd get nauseous, I'd have major heartburn, and it was heartburn caused from having an empty stomach, like the stomach acid building up or something. Then I didn't want to eat because I was feeling nauseous and having the major heartburn. So it was just kind of a vicious cycle there for two different separate days. It was really, really tricky those days. They were definitely tough days, but I just, I don't know, I didn't feel like eating. It didn't cross my mind until it was too late and I got to that point where I was nauseous and having major heartburn. So I've been much more careful about it now that I realized what happened those two days. The first time I was like, wow, well, maybe I'm coming down with something. Maybe I just, you know, I'm getting sick or maybe this is what it's gonna start being like more when we get when we get further on, you know, the bigger she gets. But it just clicked that second day when I realized like, oh, it's been a really, really long time since I've eaten anything. So I've been really good about not skipping meals and snacks. I tend to do like four to five meals a day at this point. Three actual meals and then two snacks somewhere in there. Sometimes another extra snack if I need it, but I just feel like this week I really haven't been super duper hungry and I have had this on and off all my pregnancy, of course. So that leads into cravings. The only things I've been craving are the Zupa. <laughs> I've been making it every week and also Jimmy John's. So we still have had Jimmy John's a couple of times a week. Johnny just picked up a sandwich for me one day and he and I went out on a date. It was actually last week and we got him hamburgers for our date and then we went across the street to Jimmy John's and got me a sandwich for later in the day. It was like my snack later in the day. So I've just been loving the Jimmy John's sandwich. I probably could eat one every day. I just love them so much. I want to say I had two or three of those the last week and I really want it again so I might go get one tomorrow. It's just so so good. I've been talking about the veggie sandwich but I also tried their tuna sandwich and it was really really good too. A lot of times tuna sandwiches are too much mayo and theirs is just like the perfect amount, just light mayo, mostly just the tuna and like whatever crunchy things they put in it, like celery or onions. And it was just really, really good. So I'd recommend that one as well. But I had really, really big ambitious goals this week. We did a bunch of meal prep on Sunday. Libby helped mix things. Johnny was in there helping clean up stuff and get things in and out for me. And I was wearing the belly band, it actually came during like this big meal prep baking session I was having. So I wore it, I put it on as soon as it arrived. And yeah, then she got sick and I haven't wanted any of the baked things. So Johnny's been the only one eating some of the baked things. And I made some extra things to prep in her lunchbox. She hasn't been going to school. She's been a little sick, so she hasn't been eating as much. And so I feel like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I spent all this time and effort trying to meal prep the stuff. And then I don't want any of it because I have like one bite and it's meh. I just don't feel like it's really that great. And then Liv's been sick, so she hasn't wanted anything either. I prepped her like overnight oats and she's just not having it right now being sick. She doesn't want anything to do with it. So I'm just like, oh, I wasted all that effort, but I really thought I wanted some of the stuff and then it turned out I didn't. It's just been one of those things where I'm still super food moody. I just wanna live on Zupa and Jimmy John's. And to go along with that, I am up one pound. I am at 195, which puts me 28 pounds overall, which is still in a great range. I don't have any new discoveries this week aside from the belly band. And then compared to Olivia's pregnancy, I wrote down, I was having a little bit of swelling with her pregnancy and I haven't really noticed any swelling, except if I'm on my feet a lot, my ankles will get a little bit swollen. But other than that, I haven't had any swelling that I have 
noticed. I also wrote down lots of the same symptoms. And also I had my first little two stretch marks in her pregnancy at this point. So I haven't had any new stretch marks this pregnancy. I got a bunch with her um, in like 40, I think it was like week 41. I got tons of stretch marks right around my belly button. But I'll tell you this week, my stomach has been super duper itchy. The skin has felt really stretched, especially around my belly button. It feels super tight and itchy. And I've been putting a lot of lotion on it just to keep myself from scratching. And I've caught myself a few times like scratching a little bit and really trying not to because I know that can cause some stretch marks if you're scratching the skin and damaging it. But so far I haven't had any extra stretch marks this pregnancy. The best thing this week hasn't really been baby related. It's been mostly, you know, back to school related. We're getting more into our routine aside from, you know, now she's been home a couple of days. But it was been great. We've been getting together with friends again. It's so nice to um, be able to get on a more regular schedule with friends. Also more regular or schedule with her being in school and I can get some stuff done. So everybody took vacations this summer and we were all gone for like weeks at a time and it was different weeks at the time. So we didn't really get much hangout time in the summer or play dates much in the summer. Everybody's schedule was totally different, but now everybody's getting back into the routine. We've gotten a couple of great play dates in and it's just been so nice to have that social time. And she's at the age now where she really, you know, will go off and play with her friends. So they will just play, it seems like for hours and hours and we'll just have to referee a little bit. We've been getting a lot of mom time too, which has been awesome. I just really like the group of friends that I'm making here. The worst thing has just been the achiness I've said that I think probably for a couple of weeks now and the belly band has helped <laughs> it's definitely helped some but there's just you know you get to the point where you're large and it's gonna feel kind of uncomfortable and that's kind of where I'm at now it's hard for me to get comfortable just even sitting or laying I've had a couple of nights going back to symptoms I've had a couple of nights that I just didn't get great sleep because I can't find a way to be comfortable. I've had pillows like all around me trying to make sure everything's comfortable but I'm getting to that point now that uh, the sleep is getting a little bit trickier. On the agenda, I already talked about the dentist, and then I had somebody ask me, I think it was Shasta, um, she asked me about the placenta encapsulation. She asked me if I thought it helped with the postpartum period. Did I have any weepies or baby blues or anything? And I did not really have any. I feel like I had a, a normal amount where I would kind of weep about certain things in those early weeks, but it wasn't over the top. I didn't feel like it was interfering with anything and I did not feel like I ever went into a dark place at all. Um, so I think that the placenta encapsulation helped with that. You know, you're you're taking your own body's hormones basically in those little pills. So I definitely am a believer in it. I'm gonna do it again this time. And the reason I did it in the first place was I didn't wanna have the major hormone drops because I'm a migraine sufferer. So that was my main purpose of it, but I really think it helped. I went back and watched my review video on it uh, after she asked this question and I talked about just feeling like bursts of energy which like you know when you have a brand new baby you don't feel many bursts of energy for the most part but I was definitely having some bursts of energy and I think it really had to do with the placenta pills and like I said maybe it was totally a placebo maybe it was totally in my head but it was still an effect you know just the act of taking them even if it was just all made up in my head and it was a placebo it still worked like I still felt great I still had those boost and I did not have hardly any migraine issues and I definitely didn't have postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety which I know could be really common so uh, it may have had something to do with the placenta pills or it may have just been you know I wasn't going to have it anyway but I'm not going to take the chance and find out I'm going to take the placenta pills and make sure that if it was the placenta pills that helped me that I'll still have them this time around. I think that is it for this video and my camera says 18 minutes so I finally made a video under 20 minutes and I do chop these down for you guys a lot. I do a lot of just brain dead things. I say the wrong word or I say um or I say my words like mixed up and I totally think it's pregnancy brain so I have to chop these videos a ton. I've been doing way way more editing and my videos since being pregnant than I ever have had to do in the past. You guys know like I cut out all the ums and the weird pauses and the, like the looking down at my notes and figuring out what I'm gonna say. I put, cut all those out so I try to make the videos really concise and short for you guys but man I have not been able to do it while I've been pregnant. These updates have always been really really long so I am gonna hopefully have an under 20 minute video for you guys. I'm gonna show you my belly and then that's it. All right you guys can see my setup. I've gotten my stuff that I had around me, the monitor, the TV remote so when we watch bunches of TV on sick days I've got those. I've got a planner, drink, um, 
my phone. <laughs> so here is 31 weeks. I really feel, I don't know, like she's even bigger this week than last week, which I, I don't know how it's possible with just one pound of weight gain that she feels so much bigger. The bump definitely feels huge. But there you go, 31 week belly right there. And that is it for you guys. I hope to be back in my normal setup next week, a little more organized, a little more put together. But this is just, this is the hashtag mom life right now when your kid's home with strep. You know, we've been snuggling on the couch. I haven't edited any videos, so I really hope to have this video up for you guys this week. And if not, you'll be seeing it next week a little bit late. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.